Right, today I'm going to show you a very, very interesting use of fin tool. We are going to make a fish that actually swims using the fin tool. Now, to fully understand how it works, I'm going to have to show you guys a few things first. Here I have a very simple diagram of a flat piece of metal or wood or cardboard or whatever in a stream of water or air. And you can see because it is um, facing directly into the stream, there's no resistance from the water, it just goes past it. But if I were to twist this um, flat piece of wood or whatever a bit sideways, like that, then you can actually see when it faces the stream a bit at an angle, it diverts the stream off to one side. Now this isn't extremely accurate because actually there would be vortices under here. Um, it'd be like a lot of drag and so on but basically what it does is just diverts the current now what the plate would automatically do as you can imagine that is it would start to slip downwards because it's at an angle it would start going downwards and the reason for that is that it is trying to get the stream to come exactly from the front to hit it exactly on its nose so it has the least amount of resistance now the reason it can equal out, um, let's call it equal out, equal out the flow of air or water around it when it goes down is um, because if there was no moving air or wind, what is a way that you can simulate that? You can run or move, then it would be the same as wind. So where would the wind be coming from if this thing which was to move downwards? It would come from the bottom, upwards. So what it's actually doing is, because wind's coming from the front, and because it's moving downwards, it's making wind come from the bottom, it's actually causing the wind to come at a slight angle. If any of you know anything about vectors or something, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Here I have a small diagram to try and show you that. Is You can see there's a block here, it's actually standing still, supposedly, and these two are moving towards it those angles on the red lines. So you will know that if the bottom block hits this block it should go off to that side. But there's this block as well from the top or from a bit from the side that will that wants to hit it downwards. So when this block also hits it, it actually sends it off flying almost straight because the let's call it up and down forces cancel each other out, but the forward force of both of these blocks are combined to push this one forward. So that's what this fin is trying to do. It's trying to go downwards to make some wind come from the bottom and the flow is coming from the front. So in moving downwards it's creating this effect. See some of the winds are some of the wind or flow is coming from the bottom because it's moving downwards. Some of the flow is coming from the front because the flow is moving past it. This is the actual flow going around the plate. And you can see that it's perfectly uh, straight towards the plate. And that is why it wants to go downwards when it's tilted in the flow. So you'll have to remember that when we make the fin for the fish and why it pushes it forward. So what a fish does with its fin is it pushes water away with its fin in a very specific manner. Um, I can't really make millions of little dots here to try and show you how it pushes the water away. So I'm just going to be making uh, rope lines. So what the fish does is say this is like its fin from the side. It forces the fin downwards at an angle which pushes water that way that's under the fin. And you can just imagine that the water standing still the fins coming down at an angle, it will push the water that way, which helps it give uh, give its thrust and propel it. But then you can clearly imagine also that remember the fin is trying to get the least amount of drag that it can. So when the f uh, fish pushes the fin downwards, you can see the flow starts um, coming from the bottom to the fin. So what does the fin have to do to equal out? that flow so it gets almost no drag. It has to make 
some water or fluid move from that side over across here. See, it has to make water come from that side. So that will equal it out so that the water actually comes from there. I think most of you should get what I'm trying to say here. If not, sorry. So, uh, to make the water come from the front, where does the fin have to go? It has to also move forwards. So what the fish is doing is it's forcing the fin downwards. It wants to equal out the flow, so it moves forward as well. Then what the fish would do is, uh, because obviously it can't keep pressing the fin downwards for an infinite of time, it just turns the fin around and then pushes the fin up again. So you can see now the fin is turned around and the force is coming from the bottom which in turn makes the flow come from the top. It wants to equalize it out so it goes forward to make the flow come from here. See? So that's why a fish has this waving action of the fin. And it doesn't just it doesn't just move the fin like this. It has a much more complex action of actually um, while the fin is in, say, that position, let's just weld this so I can move it. While the fin is in that position, it moves the body upwards, then changes the fin direction, and then makes it move that way again. You get what I'm saying? So it definitely doesn't just do this. So, on to the building of the fish. And that principle applies for dolphins, anything that swims. Even birds use a little bit of that method.